Welcome to the third episode of Let's Make a Game, where we're working on the project on Edge. So today uh, I was just doing some modeling work on some of the concept art that I had. Um, so I was working on this artillery cannon, the Art 1, and I uh, was just doing a lot of blender work. So what I did is I just captured the blender work, I recorded it, and sped it up. And so I'm just going to kind of do some commentary over the sped up video of it. Because I realize, you know, there's only so much you can talk about while you're modeling these things. But I'll just stop, at it, stop the video and mention certain things I was doing that may be interesting or not. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, all right, so I start here just by starting the cube, and I kind of lay out the uh, this outer casing of the uh, a cannon. So it's this part here with the this, this box part in the back. And so when I was looking at this, I realized that you can do a boolean uh, subtraction here from one cube and another cube to get this cut out. So let's see how this was done in Blender. Hopefully it won't be too fast. Basically, I make one box and I make another one, and I position it right inside of it. So see, we actually have two boxes, one one cube within another cube. What we're gonna do is I want to take this this box out here, the bigger one, and subtract it from the smaller one, and that will leave us a nice little cutout kind of horseshoe shape in here. So that's what I was trying to do there. Uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, so I use that to do that. We apply this uh, boolean modifier, and you can choose the operation. There's intersect, there's subtract, and there's union. And so I want to do the or the difference, and then I use the difference uh, modifier. And so what we see here is we have a nice horseshoe shape because I took the other cube and subtracted it from this outer cube, and it left us, left us with this nice cutout. So it's a really handy trick, and it's very nice when you have to do some sort of modeling that you know I could have made a box and extruded it and then extruded it and extruded it, or I could just you know take one box and cut out from another one. It just saves a little time. But you do have to be a little bit careful of is when you do these boolean operations, um, you can get some weird. Um, uh, triangulation in your mesh because it you know it has to algorithmically apply these this this boolean difference and sometimes it won't give you the exact results you want you I mean I'd prefer to have you know one face here one face there but it may actually divide this into multiple triangles and you have to be careful especially when you're worrying about keeping your poly count low um, that they just check it and make sure you go through and optimize the cutout afterwards and maybe it's just not worth it to use the boolean maybe you need to just go by hand and create the object itself. Anyway, I'll continue this. Um, the next thing I do is add that inner cylinder part for the main part of the cannon. Use some extrusion there to pull it out and give it a little uh, curve on there. Um, what I did here to do this barrel part uh, to get this flat barrel coming out is I took the face of this, the extrusion here, and I extruded it, but I didn't move it anywhere. I just, I just did the extrusion operation and left it there, and then I scaled it down. Then I extruded it one more time and pulled out, and that gives you that, that, that flat edge right here and then a, uh, and then another extrusion comes out to give you a sort of it looks like a cylinder you know that was attached to this but it's all one object um, then I bring in uh, this other piece to add the corner I kept realizing I had to delete it because I was not setting the number of sides on the on the cylinders I didn't have a low enough it was, it was too high poly and I didn't want to uh, have a you know high poly object like this anyway so I take that and I duplicate it for the other side, and that gives us that portion of the gun. Then I add the actual barrel, and um, add a little sight on the end. The important thing to note here is for this inner portion, notice there's an inside to the, this barrel. Now this is not just from taking that front face of the cylinder and deleting it, because what happens if you try to do that, you'll, you'll get you'll see only see the back faces of these inner these inner faces right here. And the back faces don't render. You actually see through back faces. And so what you had to do is, I, I after extruding out to finish up this barrel, I extruded one more time, and then just pulled it back. And so there's actually this inner shell here. And there's actually a back face. You can see the selection, the transform selection thing here. That's centered on this the back face of this barrel. So actually, the barrel ends right there. There's no inside to it. Um, I haven't actually didn't do this in the texturing, but I will go in and paint this all basically black in here, so it looks like it's uh, you know dark inside. Anyway, from the from the distance you're going to see in the game, it's not too important. We don't have to have a whole barrel length like something that goes all the way back to the back of the barrel, because you're not really going to see much, especially when you're going from a more bird's eye view than anything. And then I add the sight, and that's basically it. Oh, I'm testing here. Um, what I did is, uh, if you remember, I, I extruded this part from this back object here to give this inner barrel. But I realized that this inner barrel is supposed to be attached to the outer barrel and the two side parts because they're supposed to move as one unit and kind of push into the gun when it fires. It's like that's the recoil, basically. Um, what I realized is, you know, these these faces here, these were all attached to this body. 
to this base back here, this object. And what I want to do is make it attached to this objects out here. And so a simple thing you can do is if in, in edit mode with your object selected, select the faces that you want to turn into a separate object, and then press P, and you can select by selection when you bring up, it'll bring up a little menu. And it's really handy because then you can divide up uh, uh, vertices, or uh, an object into multiple objects. Now let me actually show you an example of this. Um, so if I go here in Blender, so here's the final gun. Um, so let's say I wanted to uh, I wanted to make this face, this face, this face, and this face its own object for some reason. I just select them here in edit mode, and I press P. And it says separate, and you can say by selection, by material, by loose parts. I press selection, and now if I go back to object mode, I can select this object, and I can select this object. So now it's its own little piece. And so it's a really handy thing if you uh, ever need to separate objects. So you're never restricted to your object. You don't have to go back and edit your object to make sure it's separate. You can always take away parts of it. It's just a handy thing to know. Okay, so let's go back to the video here. Um, so that's probably most of the modeling here. It's testing animation, make sure it all works together. So now we begin working on the texturing. I start with an all-white texture and using the UV maps. Uh, again, I was using that the unwrap from view, so I use an orthographic view, select the polygons I want to uh, basically uh, do the UV mapping for, and then just uh, use unwrap by unwrap from view, and it makes it nice, you know, from the side, from the top. Uh, one thing I did I did struggle with this this uh, this weapon when I was doing the UV mapping because I just I didn't take my time with it and I was kind of rushing through I do see UV mapping and start painting on it and realize oh, I need to redo my UVs because you know this this is overlapping here and I can't have that and so what I'd recommend and that's something I learned for this was that you should definitely spend the time doing a proper UV map even if it's a lot of paints it's kind of a tedious process and you don't want to have to do it but you know in the end it's really worth it okay so here's where I begin um, now I'm kind of settled with the UV map and it's okay uh, one thing I did for this unit is that uh, the UV maps is set up. The UV map, UV uh, mapping is set up such that uh, um, basically anything that's painted on the top will also be painted on the bottom, so it's kind of mirrored over things. And that's okay because I don't really need the detail level to paint on opposite sides. And honestly, the bottom of this gun, you're not really going to see it that much because it must be looking down from the top, and this will be used in artillery cannons or whatever. And this gun will pretty much have to fire, you know, up into the air. It has to have the top of the weapon actually at the top, so you can't see the bottom of it really ever in the game. Anyway, so I'm adding some shading here. I'm just kind of messing around, uh, trying to see, trying to make it look a little bit torn up, a little dinged and scratched, and just playing around with various levels of gray and and some, you know, the white, and then I add a little smiley face on the front, little words. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in game, you probably won't, but if you ever have to zoom in for whatever reason in the game, maybe you'll be able to read that. Uh, Again, I'm some, so what I wanted to do here on the on these sides of this object, I had to again redo the mapping. Is I wanted to make a nice little like caution, um, like yellow and black uh, caution tape kind of look for the front. Just thought it'd be a nice little bit of detail. So basically, using UV mapping and looking at my um, looking at the model in the other view, and making sure I get the edges perfectly straight so that it looks like it's a perfectly even um, cut for this this, uh, this little caution tape part. I paint on the lines just by hand. It's not really I'm not being too exact here. Uh, an alternative would have been to open up GIMP and actually, you know, use lines and proper drawing techniques to make this perfectly straight with their stripes. Um, but I did not do that because I'm lazy, and I decided to just do it by hand. And really, uh, from the distance you're gonna see it in the game, you'll never notice that these are slightly curvy lines. Uh, it just it'll be impossible to tell. And I kind of like the hand painted look to it even though it's my own crummy painting. So there's all that. Uh, I was painting these lines here. It was important to make sure that I matched up the uh, the lines from one side and the other. Which is trickier. It's, it's nice when you can actually see as you're painting on the model, you can actually see the lines match up and so you can get it just right. If I were in GIMP, it'd be a little hard to figure out. Um, then what I gotta do is I'm gonna go in through here and actually adding it so it looks a little torn up. So what I did was I made a gray outline, and I was going to basically erase the chunks of this. So it's like a little torn up edge here. And the gray just helps emphasize the edge and makes it look like it's kind of like a scraped sticker or something from far away. And I'm really actually pleased with this result. It looks really nice. So if you see here in the, the kind of lower fidelity view, the actual viewport, it actually does look like it is a little torn up there, like it's a sticker that got torn up, a little decal. 
Do the same thing on the other side. Get a little cut up. And the same thing for the actual edges. And so this this edge uh, here, this is actually shared between this this texture map is actually shared for all of the sides of this side, the other side of this beam, and the other side over there, and the far side of the gun. So I only had to do this in one place here. As soon as it's over here on the side of the gun, too. It's a little hard to tell, and I want to sped up to see what's going on, but it's a lot better than just having to watch this whole process. It's very slow. A lot of cursing and anger. So I go over here to the front, and I decided to add, make the make the site look uh, dark gray. I wanted to make it look like it's bolted on to the top, so I paint it, and then I add a little... Um, I'm trying to make sort of like little rivet looking things. Uh, the texture map is a little low res, so it's a little hard to get that kind of detail level. Uh, but from far away, it looks alright. Then I add some dings up here in the front to make it look a little messed up. I go back here and I add some scratches to these beams. Make them look a little dinged up too. I kind of got a little carried away with the damage stuff. Uh, this won't be so. I'm kind of torn between um, having perfectly clean looking units and having them a little more texture to them. I think it adds something. I think it'll look nicer to have them a little like beat up or something because these won't be dynamically applied so they'll they'll always look beat up they'll always look beat up in the exact same way when they get more damage I'm not going to retexture them and have different textures for each one um, both for uh, you know making keeping the cost or the, the size of the program small and just for the time it takes to actually develop all these maps you know I have a one man team it's a little hard to go through and you know think about making all these different texture maps because just if I have a lot of time in the end for some reason then I will go back and maybe that's something I could I could try to do but it's not the top of my list at all right now. So anyway, I make it more dinged up. Doing the same thing here. I'm trying to make it look like this this barrel that slides in and out of the main body is gonna look a little scratched up so I had some scratches, like little streaks. Um, try to make them less obvious. And so there we have it. So that's uh most of what's going on there. And so the final result, really, um, let me show you. Let me actually render it here. Oops, Just render it here. So this is the final result. Um, looks pretty nice. Uh, this is with obviously with a uh, there's some ambient occlusion lighting. I'm using the Blender render, so it uh, looks pretty nice. But um, so you see, I got these black, uh, kind of darker, darker gray uh, beams that pull back, and then. Here's actual cam. Let me uh, pull up a side by side with the, oops, um, with the actual artwork here. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. So here's what we were going for, and here's what we got. And so I think it's pretty close. It looks pretty good. Uh, definitely, it's not not obviously it wasn't a tricky thing really to animate. It's a pretty or to model animation. I still haven't done yet, but that won't be too bad. Um, but I was really pleased with the results. It looks good. Follows the. Uh, looks like the concept art and it has some extra detail on it. Um, one thing that's kind of missing is it's it is still pretty bland here in the back. I do have some scratches but maybe something on these beams back here. Maybe something along the barrel. The barrel looks very white. Um, I haven't done the replacement map for this yet so I haven't decided where I want color to happen. I'm thinking the tip of the barrel will be your team color. Um, probably a few stripes here and the actual gun and maybe uh, maybe some stripes here on this back part too. Um, I think that'll be enough of the team colors to really make it look good. Um, really, I haven't I haven't experimented too much with the balance between team color and you know the base diffuse color of the objects. I'm not really sure if I should make them look mostly team color, then add a little bit of detail, or have mostly detail, then a little bit of a little bit of the team colors on there. I'm getting the feeling that I should limit the amount of team color because you know they're pretty much just blue and red, and they look pretty basic, and so it's nicer to have. Um, just small accents on the units. So, like, I mean, think about StarCraft and stuff. They don't have, you know, it's not like your whole barracks is just blue and there's a little bit of color on it. So, I think maybe just using the team colors as accents will look the best. Anyway, uh, that was about as productive as I was today. It wasn't the most productive day, but I did get this uh, model out of the way. Um, it still needs a replacement map. It needs animations for firing, and it needs. Um, the various components on the model itself that tell you where the you know where the barrel tip is so that we can add muzzle flashes and whatever else um, so there's still a bit of work to do but uh, at least we got the modeling done and the texturing done so it looks pretty good alright uh, I will see you next time hope you enjoyed this and I think I'm gonna stick with this shorter format I kinda like this better maybe when I get into the when I start recording some more um, technical stuff like the programming stuff I will uh, 
I will just do a, a simple actual live uh, recording of what I'm doing because I can probably talk about it a bit more. There's plenty more to talk about uh, with modeling. You know, it's kind of the same thing. You do the same actions. And, you know, if you're really interested in learning about how I made this model, you'll learn a lot. If, if you watch, I think, episode two, I modeled the hover tank and I talked about the basics of Blender and how, how, I'm go how my, my workflow for it. It's probably not the best workflow either, so you should probably actually watch real Blender tutorials <laughs> because uh, they definitely know what they're doing. And that's basically where I learned all my stuff. So, um, anyway, so check out uh, episode two if you're really interested in watching the full process of, of modeling and texturing. It's a much longer video, though. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.